Hello everyone, I am not good at lying, and welcome to Kara no Shoujo. So this game comes highly recommended from a whole bunch of different people from a whole bunch of different places all over the internet. This is a game created in the EU from my understanding and that's about all I know about it other than that it is a very good horror visual novel that has expl explicit scenes that you guys might get to see, hooray! Unless they're too bad for YouTube, in which case you guys will more than definitely not get to see. Boo! Anyways, these are the only kinds of games I can play right now with my microphone stand being broken, and I'm very excited to get into it, so let's go ahead and hit start. Prologue, The Phantom Castle After being awakened by his phone just before dawn and picked up by a Toyo Pet patrol car, Koyozo finally arrives at Fuchu T Fuchu's Tama Cemetery. The cemetery is shrouded in a deep fog, dead branches snap underfoot as, his, as he makes his way inward. Kokoka. This is it? A group of officers are assembled there. Thanks for coming out here. Oh, sure, what's the situation? He addresses the officer who had saluted him. Sir, late last night a local resident noticed a fire in the area. He came to investigate and found this. Alright, where's the corpse? Too many of these disturbing cases have cropped up lately. It's too much for him to handle it on his own. And he still hasn't found any leads on the dismemberment case from the other day. Should I bring him in on this? A certain detective comes to mind. One who's always sticking his nose into cases like this. Tokisaki Re Tokus Tokisaka Re Reggie. Tokisaka Reggie. This case is right up his alley. Oh, it's beautiful artwork. In exchange for a small black egg, she received a torso. Right arm, left arm, right leg, and left leg. What the fuck? However, she still lacked a head. She surveyed her surroundings, but could not glimpse anyone else. Okay, then. Ah, uh, this won't do. What am I to do? I can't complete mother with this, she fretted. No matter whose head she obtained, it would not have her mother's face. Oh, mother, where could your face be? That is a good question. She asked this of a large black egg. However, it did not answer. Oh, mother. My mother's inside here. Could your face be within this shell? With that thought in mind, she could no longer wait. She put the large black egg on the ground and raised a large black stone aloft with, with both her hands. Halt! Thou must not break the shell. The words of her mother inside the egg did not reach the girl's ears. She swung the black rock downward. Okay. Crash. A clear sound rang out. Cracks appeared on a large black egg, scattering bits of the shell. Mother, where are you? Whilst chipping away at the cracked shell, the girl peered inside. There was nothing within but a thick red fluid. Oh, this is gonna be good. Where is my mother? She thrust her hands into the red fluid and stirred it around. But her fingers did not grasp her mother's head. That is probably a good thing. The red fluid inside the large black egg leaked out through the cracks in its shell. In an instant, the ground was stained red. Ah, my mother is spilling out. In a panic, the girl got down on her hands and knees. 
but most of the red fluid had already been absorbed by the earth beneath her. No. No! Mother! With large teardrops spilling down her face, she cried out for her mother. But her mother would not come back. The girl cried until all the tears left in her body had been cried out. In time, she stood up. She had no more tears left to cry. I feel kind of bad for her, but it was an egg. All that was left was the headless body of her mother in the shell of a broken black egg. Huh. I've got to look for my mother. After murmuring that, she dug in the ground that had been stained red by what was formerly her mother, then buried both the large black eggshell and her headless mother's body. Okay. Her work done, the girl set out once more to find her mother. Well, that was a bunch of horrifying imagery. Are you just going to leave me with that? Song 1. The Two Sin Copper Coin. 1956, March 3rd. Right now, I, Tokusaki Reggie, am at my office in Shinjuku. I'm writing up a case summary while smoking and taking the oc occasional swig of Suntory whiskey. It was a simple case. A wealthy man was killed and his son was arrested. However, the guy insisted he was innocent. In order to prove it, I had to show that his old man had offed himself. That's all there was to it. After f filling in the name of my client, the deceased man's son, I'm done with the paperwork. Phew. I relax, leaning back in my chair. Stubbing my cigarette out in the ashtray, I pull a fresh one from my case and light it. Now you're a chain smoker. That's no bueno, man. You quit. The smoke drifts towards the ceiling to be dispersed by the fan. Well, that's one more job out of the way. I got a, ni I got a nice little fee for this from my client. It looks like I won't have to worry about food for a while. Come to think of it, it feels like I've been working constantly since New Year's. A murder over inheritance, a murder over a factory eviction, a murder over a dispute in the Red Line District. This world is just full of murders, isn't it? I exhale a lungful of smoke along with the words. It seems we live in, a pretty, in pretty dangerous times. Well, I guess it's thanks to the fact that someone like me can make a... Well, I guess it's thanks to that fact that someone like me can make a living. After all, a detective's work thrives on the misfortune of others. I suppose it couldn't hurt to take a break for a while. Fortunately, I don't have any cases at the moment. Going home and getting some rest sounds good. If that's the plan, then there's no reason for me to stay here overnight. I quickly pack up my belongings and go outside. Tokisaka Detective Agency is located near the Shinjuku Station in a narrow alley behind the Isistan Department Store. Am I going to have to remember that? The Shinjuku Blue Line District is nearby, so I can't exactly call it a nice area. I stick a brown piece of paper next to the door bearing the words, During my absence, I can be contacted here, followed by my home address. That is a horrible idea, sir. This way, there shouldn't be any problems if a client comes by while I'm out. Then again, whether any of my clients will come all the way out to the outskirts of Suganami Ward after seeing the sign is anoth another matter entirely. Burglars probably won't target an empty office. Even if someone does break in, there's no reason for me to go track them down, I think. Looks like I've still got plenty of time. I mutter while glancing at my pocket watch. Normally I'd take the Saibu line to Kamashujugagu. But today, I'm going to make it a little detour. I head away from... Uh, to the Jap... The, to the Japan National Railway Shinjuku Station. Although it's gotten considerably warmer, the people on the street are all wearing coats. I weave my way through the crowd to the ticket counter. After buying a ticket for the Chuo line to... Station, I pass through the gate and board the train. Kichi Joji. Kichi Joji. Man, the names are going to be hard in this, in this game. 
By the time I arrive at Kichijoji, it's already past 11. If I am slaughtering these wor- these names and you guys know them, I apologize greatly. Because uh, I'm just trying to figure it out as fast as possible. Leaving the station via the north exit, I cut through the shopping district, which still retains traces of its black market roots. Before me lies my destination. A simple cafe, Moon World. Their coffee and pastries are delicious. There are a lot of cafes near my office in Shinjuku, but I frequently make the trek to this place. One of the reasons being that it run by an old friend of mine. Sorry, we're closed for the night. Kyoko, it's me. Oh, Tokusaku-kun. Seeing my face, Hazuki Kyoto stops wiping the counter. Could I get a cup of coffee? Making one now will take a bit of time, is that alright with you? Kyoko gestures toward the empty pot with a hand. If it's going to be a while, then a hot water shochu will be fine. So? Really? Well then, I suppose I'll have one too. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to translate and still give you guys an English voice because I, I mean, I know that there some of you guys are gonna know Japanese, but I don't know. Let me know if that bothers you guys later, and then I'll just stop reading when they're talking. Kyoko turns and takes a body of shochu off the shelf. Is it alright for you to be drinking? Well, we're already closed. Kyoko adds shochu to a pair of tumblers filled with hot water. The liquids mix inside the glasses. Here you go. Kyoko comes out from behind the counter and takes a glass. She starts to sit on a stool, but instead, pick up, instead picks up an apron that was hanging off of it. Oh, she must have left this out. Is she? I ask, reacting to the resigned tone underlying her words. Yeah, I hired her recently. I told you about her before, right? Now that she mentions it, I don't remember whether she's told me or not. She lives here too. She's in her room. Would you like me to get her? Nah, it's fine. It's pretty late anyway. I tilt the glass and the mild chochu slides down my throat. Really? With that, she brings her own glass to her mouth. Woo, that's good. <laughs> Sorry, it's just, it's funny because I have a much deeper voice. Okay, <clears throat> I shouldn't explain it. Well, it's certainly not your run-of-the-mill katsuri. Kat, kasutori, kasutori. Of course not. It's properly... It's proper barley. It's proper barley shochu. I know, I know. Seeing Kyoto put up puff out her cheeks in indignation, I try to soothe her. We don't really serve alcohol here, but I've got a nice selection all the time. I've noticed. Hey, are you drunk already? You're kidding. I wouldn't get drunk off this much. You know what? I'm, I'm going to stop reading when the other person is talking because it looks like my character Renji doesn't talk which might be a good narration point. So, I uh, see the only reason I was reading it to begin with was I thought that they were going to talk the whole time, but we'll stop here. So, I'll also add a point in the beginning if you guys want to just skip everything where I talked over. Kyoko glances down at her glass as she speaks. Okay. She sighs. Yeah. I nod in agreement. There are times when nothing else will do. Times when I just want to get drunk and forget about everything. A lot of things have happened to us in the past. You can do it, I believe in you. K 
Kyoko suddenly acts cheerful as if trying to shake off the memories. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to... Oh, there she That's for the best, really. I didn't come here for a heart-to-heart. -heart. Ah, yeah, I solved the case, so it'll, it looks like I'll have a little free time. You don't have to worry. That won't happen to me. Kyoko's expression turns worried. I guess there's nothing I can do about that. Her husband passed away a while ago. Oh. I'm sorry, lady. That's gotta be horrible. Yeah, I know. I drain the remaining shochu from the bottom of the glass, then stand up. I'm going home and sleeping. What do I owe you? I pull out my wallet as I ask. Don't worry, I just got paid, so I can afford it. That's cute. Is that so? Well then, I appreciate your generosity. <laughs> I'll come again. Good night. You bet I will. I didn't say anything. Kyoko sees me to the door. Looks like the trains aren't running anymore. Well... From here, walking home isn't too bad. Fortified by the warmth of the shochu, I force myself to walk into the chill of the street. Was that a commercial break? <laughs> I really, really love her. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna save. And alright guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I hope you guys are enjoying the game so far. I'm going to stop talking over anybody who's not supposed to be talking or who doesn't have vocals in the game. But I hope you guys have liked the story so far. I'm actually kind of liking it. Um, I can't wait for it to develop a little bit as it, this might be kind of a longer playthrough as, you know, this is an actual paid for visual novel. Anyways, I hope you guys are having a great day, great week, great weekend, great everything. I hope everything is going wonderful for you. And I will see you all very soon.